This is the first lecture on topic 11.2. We're going to be talking about the generation of electricity and how it is delivered to our house. Okay, and so this is going to start to, to talk to us about AC current or alternating current. Most of what we've been doing up to now has been DC current or direct current, where the, the voltage and the current stay pretty much constant throughout. <clears throat> okay. Under understandings, we have this set. Uh, we'll talk about transformers and, and diode bridges and rectification um, in a later uh, in the next PowerPoint. Okay. But uh, we're, so we're basically focusing on the first three uh, items here. Okay. Under applications and skills, uh, we have all of this thing. Uh, you can kind of read that on your own. Okay. There are a lot of formulas in this unit, okay? There's one, two, three, four, five, six formulas. But really, these are all formulas. Um, the formulas are all related. Uh, and we'll talk about how they're all related and uh, where we're going to go. You can recognize some of these as uh, maximum power. If you see that, it's just current times voltage. So we also have the other forms, I squared R and V squared over R. Um, the third form is just Ohm's law, V equals IR, uh, and so we'll see those in action and how they are all related. Okay. Um, under guidance, we'll talk about transformers and the details between real world and versus ideal ones. Okay. Um, okay. First off, generators. Okay. We talked about this in class a little bit, okay, but most power generation converts energy from one form into the kinetic energy of a rotating coil in a magnetic field. Okay. So we saw all of that with um, Faraday's law and the delta flux over delta T. Okay. The magnetic field, so th therefore, induces an electromotive force on the electrons in the coils, and that EMF is then delivered to your house. Because of that rotation, the loop is alternatively exposed to the north side and then the south side of a magnet, etc., etc., etc. You know, very often. Okay. And so my EMF, okay, remember Faraday's law is EMF is equal to minus n, where n is the number of loops. And so there are a lot of loops in these generators. Okay. Times the derivative or delta flux over delta t. Just to remind yourselves, okay, flux is nothing more than the magnetic field strength times the area times the cosine of the angle. Because of that rotation, instead of the, the angle is the part that's changing, and so instead of the angle, we have an omega t, where omega is the kind of the frequency of revolution. Okay, and so if I take a derivative of this, okay, for those of you in calculus, okay, the result is going to be a sinusoidal EMF, and because of V equals IR, a sinusoidal current. Okay, so the derivative of that formula basically gives me an EMF is equal to the uh, N number of loops, B uh, magnetic field strength, A area of the loops, omega sine omega T. Okay, so the omega comes out. Okay, so sometimes I'll refer this, to this as the WNBA formula. Okay. In North America, the frequency of the power that comes out of our outlet, okay, all the power that comes out of the outlets in uh, the world, as far as I'm aware, the frequency of that is, is alternating current, meaning it goes uh, through a plus voltage and then a minus voltage. So the current will also alternate directions. At, part, at one point, it's flowing forwards. At another point, it's flowing backwards. And everything works pretty much fine. We'll talk about the differences between this and direct current. Okay. So in North America, we primarily use 60 hertz and 110 volts. Most for 110 volts being the maximum voltage. Much of the rest of the world uses a different frequency of 50 hertz and 220 volts. We won't get into there into the why we have this difference, um, but there's probably a lot of political aspects associated with this. Okay, so at the turn of the century, there was a big battle going on between Edison and uh, Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla. Okay, Thomas Edison was strongly in favor of sending direct current from the generation facilities to our houses. Okay, Tesla and Westinghouse were, however, were strongly in favor of alternating current. Uh, this was a big battle between the two of them, and we can also, you know, if you're interested, you can do some research into that. Okay, but in the end, Tesla actually ended up winning out. One of the few battles that he won. Okay, um, and it was primarily cost that drove it. Okay, because alternating current is naturally generated through the generators. 
Okay, it naturally goes through this plus minus cycle. Okay, and so what I needed to do then is uh, to deliver it to our house is require the development of something called a transformer. And transformers are actually relatively low cost items. Whereas in Thomas Edison's case, DC electricity actually ends up losing a lot of its power in the transmission of electricity. Okay, so the graph of alternating current, okay. Um, on the left side, we have voltage, okay, that's our EMF, okay. And so what we're sending to the house is actually going from a plus voltage to a minus voltage, plus voltage to minus voltage, 60 or 50 times a second. Okay, and the, because of going through this plus minus, the current is also going forward, backward, forward, backward, through the same cycle. Okay, and if you look at this, why, where am I getting this 110 volts or 220 volts from? Okay, what is this 311.13 or, uh, you know, in European, comma 13? Okay, but it's, so where, wh why that disconnect? What's the difference? Okay, that 110 is what we call, or 220 is what we call, average voltage or RMS voltage, okay? And so let's look at that in a little bit more detail, okay? The average voltage of a sine graph would pretty much be zero because it spends half its time above zero, half its time below zero, and the shape is identical, okay? So if I take an average of that, it's zero, but that's nonsensical, okay? It implies then that my average power used by an appliance would be zero watts or because of P equals V squared over R. Okay, but since power is proportional to the square of the voltage, V squared is never going to be below zero. So we go through this thing that we call RMS voltage. We ran into RMS before in the thermal unit when we talked about the root mean square of the velocity of the particles. Some are going forward, some are going backwards, okay, but really just wanted an average. So. What we do there, okay, we first square the number, take an average, and then take a square root, okay? By squaring it first, we make it all positive. By square rooting it at the end, we bring it down to its correct level, okay? And mean is just our average. The best way to think of this is pretty much just an absolute value average. So looking at this thing, the absolute, the average then, would be roughly one over the square root of two times the max, not roughly, exactly one over the square root of two of the maximum voltage. So we have these values of VRMS and IRMS, okay? Think of them as average, okay? Average voltage is uh, really just the maximum divided by the square root of two. Plugging all this stuff into our P average formulas, okay, P average is equal to V squared RMS uh, over R, or pretty much nothing more than one half our max voltage squared divided by R. So pay attention to the difference between maximum and RMS or average, okay? So power transmission and how it gets to our house. Okay, high voltage power lines are used to deliver electricity from the power plants to our houses. Okay, we use high voltages because it reduces the power loss associated with delivering the power. We'll talk about that in, in a little more detail. Okay, but this is a typical generation system. Okay, on the left hand side we have our generators. Okay, whatever system, whether it's uh, coal, oil, nuclear, doesn't really matter. Even, um, you know, the uh, hydroelectric generates the moves the turbine instead of using steam or whatever, but it still moves a turbine. Okay, that electricity is then what uh, doesn't come out at like a hundred thousand volts or anything like that. It must go through what we call a step up transformer. <clears throat> it's called a step up because we're stepping up the voltage from whatever is being generated up at to some really really high voltage. Okay, we need that really, really high voltage to deliver it from the generators to our houses or factories or whatever, okay, to avoid losing a lot of power through that delivery process, okay. When it gets closer to our houses, we go through the, a reverse process called a step-down transformer, 
Okay, step down transformers convert that really, really high voltage down to something that's really more usable and uh, slightly less dangerous to us than those, you know, really high voltage power lines. Okay, so a transformer. <clears throat> okay, so and the numbers associated with it. Okay, at the power plant, we're generally talking about 18,000 volts, so it's pretty high already. Okay, um, and yes, plenty dangerous. Okay. But in the transmission of it, okay, we actually step it up to, you know, hundreds of thousands of volts, okay? 350 kilovolts is what's shown here. But that transmission allows the electricity to go hundreds of miles, even though the wires have doing the delivery have resistance, okay? Very little power is going to be lost in the delivery of that electricity, okay? When it gets closer to our neighborhood, Okay, when it gets closer to our neighborhood, it stepped back down to that 18,000 volts that it was originally at pretty much. Okay, and then that stepped down again and again. Um, you know, at the city level, it stepped down. And then at the neighborhood level, it stepped down. And then at the time it gets to our house, it stepped down yet again. Okay, and all of this is done to reduce the losses associated with it um, the delivery of electricity. Okay, so what is a transformer? Okay, a transformer is an electronic device that uses electromagnetic induction to change the peak voltage and therefore average voltage of an alternating current system. Okay, when you see AC, don't think air conditioning, it's alternating current in this case. And a transformer basically is very simple mechanism. On one side, I have an input coil, lots and lots of wires. And on the output side, I have the same thing, lots and lots of coils, okay? And in between, okay, is an iron core that helps deliver that magnetic energy from coil one to coil two, okay? There's nothing different between these, okay, that says this has to be the input side, this has to be the output side. It's completely reversible. Okay, what counts is the ratio of the number of loops between the input side and the output side. Okay, because that's what's going to determine the change in voltage. Okay, ideally the transformer converts the voltages based on the ratio of the two coils. I say ideally because there are losses associated with this. Okay, not a lot. Okay, generally uh, transformers are about 98, 99% efficient. We'll talk about the the one, two percent losses. Okay, um, the ratio of the two coils is also called the turn ratio. Okay, and so if I have on the primary side, which is the input side, okay, if that has more coils than the secondary side. Okay, then what I'm doing is I'm stepping down the voltage. Okay, it's a ratio of the uh, voltage on the primary side divided by the voltage on this secondary side, and that's going to equal um, the number of turns on the primary divided by the number of turns on the secondary. Be careful though when it comes to current. Because of V equals IR, current is going to be inverted, IS secondary divided by IP primary. The schematic for a drawing, uh, the schematic drawing for a transformer looks like this picture on the bottom. Okay, we basically have a primary coil on the left side. You know, it's a rough drawing of a coil, and a primary and a secondary coil on the right side. And in the middle is that soft iron core. Okay, and so that's what that picture is trying to represent. Okay, so let's look at an example. Okay, in this case I have a transformer, it's got 500 turns in the primary winding and 10 turns in the secondary. Okay, and my input voltage is 120 volts RMS. Okay, so as, it, as that current goes through the first coil, it's generating a magnetic field. Okay, and it's a changing magnetic field because I have alternating current. Transformers do not work with DC current because it, nothing changes. So because I have this alternating current, my magnetic field strength is constantly getting stronger, reversing, getting weaker, reversing direction, getting weaker, all, you know, 60 times a second. Meanwhile, <coughs> the secondary is picking up on that change in magnetic fields. Remember, they're connected by that soft iron core. 
So it's inducing a current in that secondary winding. And I can calculate that current based on the ratio of those two turns. Okay, since Vs over Vp is equal to Ns over Np, I just plug in the various numbers, keep making sure I have the right numbers in the right spot. Okay, and so my primary had 500 turns, input side. My secondary had 10 turns. So the ratio there is 10 to 500, and it's going to be the same 10 to 500 in my voltage, okay, including VRMS, including VMAX, okay, but they gave me VRMS in this case. So in going through that, I basically find that the output of my transformer or the output of the secondary is basically going through a 2.4 average voltage, 2.4 volt average, okay. So let's look at what happens with current, okay? Same, pretty, pretty much the same numbers, but now it's connected to a resistive load of 15 ohms. Calculate the current in the primary and secondary winding, okay? Well, we found out the voltage in the secondary is 2.4 volts RMS. So using V equals IR, I use V equals IR because my resistive load is 15 ohms, okay? Or that's what's connected to the secondary. So my secondary current is therefore using V equals IR, simply about 0.16 amps RMS, okay? Plugging that back in, okay, because of conservation of energy, VI on the, the, the first side has to pretty much equal VI on the second side, especially in an ideal transformer, okay? And so that's why the I values end up being flipped. Okay, because of VI, it's power that must be conserved from one side to the other. Okay, so IP over IS is equal to NS over NP, and so I actually have very little current. Okay, very little current on the um, primary side, 3.2 milliamps. Okay, and it is this low current on the primary side, okay, the fact that I have a lot more voltage on that side, I mean a lot more um, voltage, a very little current, okay, that ends up <coughs> uh, driving the fact that I have very little loss in my transmission. If I have a very, very high voltage, my current gets even smaller, okay, and I can't calculate delta V, okay, for, for a long transmission wire, I can't calculate a delta V. Okay, because I just don't have that, especially when I'm talking in alternating current. Okay, but I do have, um, I do know the current in that wire, and I can do an I squared R on the transmission wires. And especially because I'm making my I really small, by squaring it, I make it even smaller. Okay, so I can calculate power loss through the long cable via I squared R. Okay. So, real world. In the real world, ideal transformers, I, I, well, ideally a transformer has no energy loss. In the real world, they do, okay? The loss is primarily due to a couple of things. One, resistive heating, okay? The wires that make up the coils, they're still metal, they still have resistance, they still lose heat, okay? Um, we try to make that as little as possible, um, use the thicker wires. Thicker wires mean thick, bigger transformers, more money, etc., etc. Okay, so there is a little bit of loss because of resistive heating. <clears throat> the other losses are basically because of um, the iron core is not a perfect thing. Okay, um, the iron it's metal, and so we'll end up with Lenz's law action going on there. Okay, there will be uh, small currents generated in the iron core that resist the incoming um, AC voltage. Okay, same thing with flux leakage. Okay, the, not all of the magnetic flux that is generated in the primary ends up in the secondary. Okay, um, but again, real world transformers are about 98, 99% effect efficient. Okay, thank you.